It's winter and there's snow on the mountain tops in the forest country. The intersecting lines of the ridges and valleys. Isolated in clearings in the bush are the timber towns, homes of the milling industry and those who work in it. Such a town is Erica, a mill town and the district headquarters of the Forestry Commission which controls the work in the timber. Here in a house close to the state mill which his father manages lives Ron Horton. It's a school day but before he goes... And off with the message to the mill below. Down the slope from the timber jinker run the logs to feed the mill. And down runs Ron looking for his father. Seen Dad? The logs are winched the last bit into the mill and onto the carriage, which takes them through the big saws and break them down into flitches, more manageable pieces. As the log comes through, wedges are driven into the cut to stop the saws from jamming. That chain holds the pitch in place. pulling the lever which moves the log through the breaking down saws. All clear. And message delivered, Ron goes carefully through the mill and on to school, past Mr. Bolger, who spent a lifetime working in the industry, an expert saw sharpener. The number one saw cuts the flitches into scantlings, the wood used for house frames. The scantlings slide down the ramp and are stacked on railway trucks on the last remnant of the old narrow railway line to nearby Walhalla, a boom gold town of the last century. Timber is put on this train to transfer to trucks to be taken to Moe, 20 miles away, by road, and to more distant Melbourne, places which depend on the timber towns for their supplies of house-building timber. Timber. And this is the project that Ron's class is working on.
They're swapping information on a subject they know well for less well-known material from a city school. Then school's out. to do in the town after school. Only those homes that make their own electricity have television. But there's always games, mucking around, the walk home from school. Nowhere's very far away in a small town. Ron's walk home takes him through the grounds of the Forest Commission. These boxes here contain the weather measuring gauges to tag the changeable weather of winter and the dangerous dry weather of summer when a constant watch is kept for fire. The firefighting trucks and tanks are always ready. But the fire at home is ready too and that's the place to be on a cold winter's night. There are two mills in the township, the school, the forestry commission, and of course, the shops, which are the heart of every town. The post office, the garages, the hotel, the general store that sells almost everything and is supplied by a weekly truck. Ah, footy. Ron's father has promised to take him to see the work in the bush, and this is the first opportunity. There's the butchers. But they need a quick lunch for today's trip. The baker, using his shovel-like peel, made of wood, to pull the bread and pies from his spotless oven. Mm, you can almost smell it. Ron was quite prepared to wait for his dad, but he couldn't wait for that pie. Mr. Horton's going to the forest to see the trees that will soon be coming as logs to the mill. The men are working some distance from the town, and so they take the most interesting road to get there. The noise of machinery draws them into a clearing beside the road where logs are being split into billets, like fence posts, for transport to the paper mills for making them into pulp. Work which, up to quite recently, took days, takes only minutes with this machine. winds up the side of Mount Erica, following the route of an old timber tramway, which was used to haul timber out of the bush. In winter, the weather can change very quickly in the mountains, and sunshine and rain and even snowfalls can all come and go in the same day.
A small bridge carried the road across that mountain stream. But this 80-foot high trestle bridge carried the old tramway. Melting snow feeds this little roadside waterfall. Steady on the corner. Down there below us, in the sunshine, the tree fellows are at work. the block from the scarf which Jack Brown has cut in the tree on the side to which it will fall. Now watch your step down there where they're working. And on to meet the men. conference and Ron is to stay with Stan and Jack Brown while his father goes to check trees for felling. or two with an axe can tell an experienced ear whether a tree is sound or hollow. The big logs are not the only timber that needs chopping. Firewood too. But a fire like this is a winter luxury only. <laughs> A winter friend, but a deadly enemy in summer. What you like, good bro? Billy T. One of the symbols of the bush. Everybody's hungry. Strong? Whew, too hot. An experienced eye tells that all trees are not for milling. Down tree.
he cuts with a chainsaw. Drugs. That's water pouring out of the sappy center of the tree. While the scarfs are cleared, another saw cut is made on the side of the tree opposite to which it will fall. And there she goes. comes back as the trunk, trimmed of its branches, is cut up. And as the bulldozer arrives, the Hortons leave for home. in the bush goes on. The dozer gets ready to sneak or haul the logs from the forest. Trees, bush, timber. This is the world that Ron Horton sees around him. In many ways, it's a harsh and tough world. But the Hortons know that here is a good place to live. 